In other news, Israel and the U.S. are set to hold their largest ever joint aerial military war games next year. The exercise dubbed Austere Challenge will take place in May of 2012. Some 5,000 U.S. and Israeli troops will take part in the maneuver. The news comes amid recent reports that Tel Aviv is planning to strike Iran in the near future. On Wednesday, Israeli Air Force successfully test-fired an intercontinental ballistic missile with a 10,000-kilometer range capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. Recent rhetoric as well as the military tests come at a time when the United Nations nuclear watchdog, the IAEA, readies to release a report on Tehran's nuclear program. Tehran says the agency is under immense pressure by the West to undermine Iran's peaceful nuclear program. Tehran has also warned of devastating response to any attack. Well, for more on that story, we're going to be joined by James Morris, editor of AmericanHijack.com. Ms. Morris, thank you for joining us on World News. This will be the largest and most significant joint exercise. What will be the outcome of such warmongering move? Thank you for having me back on Press TV. Uh, my website's actually America-Hijack.com, and I very much appreciate Press TV mentioning it on the air in such dangerous times. I think the out outcome can be catastrophic. I mean, we might be talking about uh, a potential Armageddon situation if uh, the rogue state of Israel uh, initiates a strike on Iran's nuclear facilities when Israel sits there with 200 to 400 nuclear weapons and it won't even let the IAEA inspect those weapons. So what you have in America is the pro-Israel lobby here, AIPAC, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, of course, that uh, John Mearsheimer and Stephen Walt discuss in their excellent book, The Israel Lobby and U.S. Foreign Policy. And they've been put, AIPAC's been pushing for an attack or a war with Iran for quite some time now. And uh, you also have the neoconservatives, which my good friend Dr. Stephen Snagoski discussed in his The Transparent Cabal book. And I think we could be on the brink of war. I know the U.S. military is very concerned about it. Uh, Leon Panetta, the Secretary of Defense, had made at least one trip to Israel. He'd, in two weeks, he'd met with the Israelis twice. You had the head of the uh, U.K. military uh, meeting with the Israelis. I believe his name was Mr. Richardson, Defense Secretary, or he was a military commander there. And, uh, you know, I, I think we could be on the brink of war. Now, uh, what's incredible about this is why doesn't the U.S., my country, um, I've also got a British passport as well, why don't we talk about what Israel is doing with regard to all those nuclear weapons and how Israel had threatened European capitals. If you look at the uh, background of this, uh, Israeli military uh, researcher, historian, Martin Van Krafel, had actually threatened U U European cities with annihilation uh, with those 200 to 400 nuclear weapons that Israel reportedly has. So why do we have to have another war uh, for Israel in the Middle East? If you go to my America-Hijack.com blog that we mentioned here, you have the former FBI whistleblower Colleen Raleigh uh, on a recent uh, radio show with my good friend Phil Turner, USS Liberty Survivor Phil, Phil Turner, who was on with you last hour. And she said that a ploy by Israel here could be to attack Iran and draw the U.S. into a war against Iran, of course, for Israel, while the U.S. troops are still in Iraq. Now, let me also conclude here. Obama has been, President Obama has been disingenuous when he says that he's pulling out U.S. troops from Iraq. They're not going to be pulled back completely from the Middle East. They're going across the way into Kuwait to keep an eye on Iran, and those troops could easily be mobilized from any war with Iran. Again, let's just hope that this is just uh, psyops to try to get stronger sanctions against Iran from Ch Russia and China. But when you have these ongoing war games and the rhetoric coming out of Israel and from the U.S. APAC, neocon influence government, who knows what's possible? I say prepare for war, and I don't want Americans and Brits dying as a result of it, and Iranians too. Well, Mr. Morris, in your opinion, uh, would you say that the U.S. is planning to use Israel as their proxy because American people back home will not tolerate another foreign invasion? Well, what I'm saying here is that Israel basically uses America as its proxy. I don't believe in what Norm Chomsky says, you know, with regard to the U.S. using Israel as its proxy in the Middle East. Again, if you look at uh, the Walton Mearsheimer Israel Lobby and U.S. Foreign Policy book and former Republican Congressman Paul Finley's They Dare to Speak Out book, it's clearly shown how Israel uh, uses America as its proxy through the Congress, which AIPAC has so much influence on, and also the neoconservatives on the Republican Party. So what I'm saying is that the U.S. here 
uh, really can't, doesn't tell Israel what to do. Israel's calling the shots, and they know that if it, uh, Obama doesn't really want to go to war with Iran, but if Israel strikes Iran first and draws uh, the U.S. into it, with our, all our troops still in the region, all the U.S. troops still in the region, and I just saw a report recently that I think there's like at least one carrier task force that's in the region with 30 warships. These could all be mobilized in a war with Iran, and what I'm also very concerned about is what about relations with Pakistan? You have the arch neoconservative Max Boot, who's been pushing for uh, escalated military action in Pakistan. And we saw from my email exchanges with General Petraeus last year, which the U.S. media didn't cover either, that he was actually advising General Petraeus to take a harsher line against that in Afghanistan. I think these neoconservatives, these Zionist, Israel first neoconservatives, are trying to get us into a much uh, wider war in the Middle East with APAC, the pro-Israel lobby. The neoconservatives are, up, are the upper echelon of that lobby. And it could result in the next world war if Russia and China get involved. We are in very dangerous times here. The world has to wake up to what these Zionists are doing in, the, in America and in Britain, in the UK as well. And we've got to rise up against it before it's too late to. And Mr. Morris, just briefly and finally, what, what do you think the U.S. rhetoric is, people back home, the American citizens? What, what is their feeling on if this plan goes into war, like you said? Well, l let me give an example. Americans don't know. The, the uh, pro-Israel biased U.S. media, American media, you've got Wolf Blitzer over at CNN, who's a former AIPAC newsletter editor. Uh, you see him basically uh, leading the charge uh, with uh, this anti-Iran warmongering rhetoric, uh, going back to this bogus, uh, apparently bogus, uh, you know, scheme to assassinate the Saudi ambassador. I mean, th that, that was just incredible. I mean, I think the FBI director uh, Mueller said it was like a scene out of a Hollywood script, as if Iran is going to go and do that and use the Mexican drug cartels. That's obviously coming from the neoconservative pro-Israel lobby. I believe you had uh, Madek or Mike O'Callhill on your show of the passionateattachment.com blog, and he had an article out, Path to Persia, and he talks about how the Zionist Brookings Institution had said that you had to have a, a, a fabricated incident to get the American public to go along with the war with Iran. Lo and behold, right, you know, a few years after that, or whenever that paper was written, um, you have this scheme with this, uh, you know, a Saudi ambassador who's about to be assassinated by the Iranians and the neoconservative, pro-Israel biased, Zionist occupied news meter in Very America. Very well. Well, Mr. Morris, I do that. apologize. We're going to have to cut you off. We question. are running out of time. Americans that was don't Jane know. Morris uh, joining us. He's an editor with AmericaHijack.com, joining us right here on World News.